everything is going to change. This is not just numbers. This is not just figures on papers. These are these are lives. Jordan Williams, whose six-year-old son attends Lafayette Elementary in West Seattle, was email bombed by SPS Wednesday afternoon. I immediately read the message and just had the wind knocked out of me. The email pushing parents to well resourced schools at Seattle Public Schools, a link with two proposed plans which could close 21 schools under option A or 17 under option B. This is to slice their $100 million budget shortfall. Not a final decision, but it definitely, we know that it feels final if you see your school's name on a list. I'm angry. Alice, who has a first grader at McGilvera, claims she's seen school closures like this in other major cities like Chicago back in 2013. According to NPR, the $1 billion deficit is now $628 million and enrollment losses have only accelerated. And I do not trust that they can actually pull it off effectively. I think it's going to be chaos. The schools at risk of closing are scattered across the district. The district's well-resourced school officer, Dr. Marnie Campbell, says diversity and inclusion are a priority, but these closures only yield one-third of the deficit. Is it worth it? If we don't right-size our district, we will continue um, to uh, have to cut back um, every single year that operating deficit accumulates. So is it worth it? We believe so. We would absolutely not be doing this if we didn't think it was worth it. It feels like there's absolutely no compassion in this plan, no empathy. McGilver parents like Lynn were prepared for their school to be on the list, but they were not prepared for the division of their community. We have friendships that are um, true friendships of children and parents and families. And when you look at the map and you realize some are going in one direction, some are the other, um, it's, it's truly heartbreaking. There is a lot at stake for everyone, but keeping students like Jordan's son in his special education program is a dire need. Having to move him somewhere else could be detrimental to his, um, his education, but I can't. Um, I can't accept it without trying to change it first. Going back to that one third saving, Dr. Campbell explained it will be an annual saving until that budget does balance out. She says that special education and neurodiverse programs like the ones offered here at Lafayette will also be offered in some capacity in other neighborhood schools. The next school board meeting is scheduled for September 18th. In West Seattle, Alejandra Guzman. Fox 13 News.